Hi everybody, this is Frank Clifford and welcome to another Astrologer Frank Answers, an opportunity for me to answer some of your questions uh, about your own chart or about astrology in general. Uh, you can write to me directly through the londonschoolofastrology.com website once you've created a free account. You'll also be invited to various Q&As, open houses that we're doing in the coming weeks and coming months as well. So feel welcome to drop by and connect. Okay, I have a couple of questions from Kerry, uh, who wrote um, a few times about her chart. I'm going to share that with you now. Here we go. And you'll notice that uh, I've included the sun, moon, ascendant, a uh, sun, moon midpoint, along with the ascendant midheaven uh, midpoint as well. And... Uh, just thought they would be interesting to include um, as well. Now, Kerry had a few questions. Um, she's a mother healer, creator, great lover of nature, with a fierce passion for learning about the human spirit. Now, we can see some of that in the chart here with the, the strong Virgo emphasis and also the strong 12th house, which you'll know from uh, yesterday's recording that uh, strong 12th house, strong Virgo is very much about finding something that you can be of meaningful service to, but not to lose yourself in that totally, but to be able to give freely and generously of that. It sounds like Carrie's been doing that for a long time. Um, the time is approaching, she says, where all my kids are grown, I can commit to a full-time career. I've got many interests, uh, but I have a hard time deciding uh, what would be of the greatest service. My psychic empath abilities allow me a deep knowledge into the world around me, but it's often overwhelming. Okay, so yes, that that will come into the idea of that boundary that you need with such a strong Virgo emphasis and 12th house emphasis as well. From an astrological perspective, what career would you see as best suited for me? Well, sounds like you probably know that already, but what you need is some downtime with it. What I didn't mention yesterday in that video is that the 12th house is also the house of downtime. Uh, it's a sort of period you think of when the actor prepares, when the actor is maybe out of work, for instance, or they are rehearsing for a launch, for a play, for a premiere of some kind, you know. So the 12th house has that ability to just disappear into its own realm, um, hopefully to absorb positive feeling around them and then to come out when they feel ready as and when often 12th house people play a part uh, actors politicians often have very strong 12th houses uh, and they in order to navigate the world they have to put on some sort of persona and that may be a useful thing to for you Carrie, to have a slightly different persona in your work um, as a psychic perhaps as an empath uh, so you you can present that to the world uh, appropriately with appropriate time boundaries, money boundaries, all of that, uh, but be able to uh, retreat when you need and just soak up nature and uh, and to heal yourself, of course. Now, Carrie then wrote uh, a month later, gosh, it's been a while, yes. Um, and uh, let's have a look, um, mentioned um, that uh, she feels she has a grand cross. Now, uh, aspect configurations like T-squares, grand trines, grand crosses, usually or strictly speaking, should be with the planets. Uh, but when you start throwing in the nodes, the angles, then you often get a lot more of these configurations in people's charts. I'm more of a stickler for staying with the planets or if the angles are included with the planets, they're portals, they're ways of dealing with particular planetary energies. So what that really means is when I look at your chart, I don't see a grand cross. Uh, I, I really don't, except, of course, with the four angles. And a lot of people with their angles uh, will have the angles square to each other, creating a uh, an angular grand cross, if you like. Yeah. Now, if you are going to consider that, remember that the cardinal signs are very dynamic. They're very good at dealing with crisis, dealing with emergency. OK, what's next? I'll slip into gear, focus on what needs to be done, get it sorted and tidy up. Yeah? And there's something about that with your chart as a carer, as a healer, as you mentioned, the Libra, Cancer, 
combination of ascendant midheaven is often found in people who are caretakers, professional caretakers of some kind as well. But being a caretaker means you have to be able to deal with emergency. Yeah? And that's something that the Cardinal Grand Cross with your four angles uh, states quite clearly, um, that ability to do that. If we think about your work, I mean, that's probably a good hour or so of consultation to really talk to you about all the different facets of your chart. But just doing something superficial is never going to suit you with that Mercury-Pluto conjunction. Doing some research, going deep, getting to the truth. This is the combination of the private detective or the psychologist, Mercury-Pluto, somebody who's analyzing human nature, analyzing nuance, body language. Um, and I imagine with your type of chart, you'll want to put a lot of different things together. So if you're staying in the metaphysical, you might want to do astrology with some uh, intuitive psychic work or psychic exercises with clients. You may also want to do some body language or handwriting analysis uh, that may suit that Mercury Pluto, but it's deeply investigative. It's never happy with the official version of anything. <laughs> and so this part of your chart is, is uh, key to being used up. Otherwise, it just sits around being suspicious of motive or I wonder what they really meant. It needs something to devour, to pour its energy into. Also with the moon Uranus, and maybe this comes a little bit closer to your question about always having so many different things. You don't want to categorize yourself, you say in the question here. That's a very moon Uranus thing. I don't want to be boxed in. I need my freedom, whether that's freedom of expression, freedom of movement, or simply don't categorize me as, oh, that crazy, the crazy astrology woman up the road or <laughs> whatever people might think. And, and again, the moon Uranus says, I do care what people think, but another part of me says, you know, who really cares? Um, I'm doing what I love to do. So the moon Uranus will always, in a sense, um, rebel against categorization. Yeah. And it also means that you need to mix up your days. Moon Uranus people love to know that tomorrow might be uh, flying to Germany and then next week they'll be doing a project that lasts a week or two. And it's not a sitting at the desk nine to five working on the same uh, with the same company and the same people. It really does need excitement on a daily level. And if it doesn't get it, it tends to want to provoke it or shake things up. So if there's drama around, have a look sometimes at maybe you even being the source of that drama. Uh, you sort of think, oh, this um, this bottle of pop is has gone a bit flat. Let's shake it up. Even if it explodes, it's going to be more interesting than letting things just become a little bit too predictable. Yeah. So whatever it is you choose to do, my feeling is healing and service, and but with boundary, of course. But getting doing something that feels different you know if you're doing astrology one day it's a day of clients the next day you might be introducing astrology to a local group uh, or an institute of some kind or you might be doing a fundraiser somewhere or simply um, meeting the public and talking about your subject um, this is going to intrigue you so don't box yourself in i don't think you want to from your from your uh, email to me uh, and nor should you nor should you need to do that virgo is also a very mutable sign uh, mutable earth so often it's considered like sand rather than the rest of that uh, stodgy earth like taurus or, or capricorn the the earth of taurus or the brick of capricorn uh, so it's sort of sandy in a way. So it wants something, uh, the mutability needs to be in process, always to be doing new things, sorting new things, got a new project, something new to file, something new to be editing, for instance. Uh, but there's always a need in that earthy way to be useful, to be contributing in some way, in a practical way to people as well. Okay. Well, I hope that's been useful, Kerry. Thank you for uh, writing to me and feel, as always, with all of you, feel very welcome to get in touch and share any feedback uh, on these. Hope it's been useful. I'll see you all another time soon. Take care. Bye-bye.